Welcome to Bible study with the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. Each week we make an online video devotional available, and then we follow up the following Sunday in person to discuss that passage of scripture even further. Today's video will be further discussed when we gather on Sunday, September 1st at 9.30 a.m. in the church library located in our church in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. As we turn to our reading today, please join me in prayer. Almighty God, as we read scripture, we often try to apply the meaning of it, the context, the people, their actions and thoughts to the world and context we live in today. By the presence of your Holy Spirit, remind us that the words of scripture are written about people from different places in different times, experiencing the world in many different ways than we now experience it. Yet Lord, their faith in you is the same as our faith. Their call to follow and worship you and to use the gifts you have given them is the same as the call you place on us. So although it may seem very different, remind us of the common faith we share. We ask this all in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. We spent the majority of the summer of 2024 reading and studying about King David and then King Solomon going through the history of that time in 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. And another part of scripture that connects to David and Solomon is the book of Psalms. Now Psalms is presented in scripture as a book of hymns, praise music, liturgy, poetry, we often read it responsively during our worship services here with our congregation in Elkins Park. The book of Psalms is attributed to be either written by King David or at least written during the time of his reign as the King of Israel. So today I'm gonna to share with you a Psalm and tell you a little bit about the background of why it was written, what was happening in David's life and what lessons it had in its original time period and maybe for us today. So please follow along as we look at Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name on the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Now, although Psalm 34 is in a book of hymns, we don't know the tune. 
We don't know the musical accompaniment. We don't know what instruments or pace or tempo or key signature this was originally in. We do know that the words I just read were sung as an act of worship. Now they are written for David to describe a time in his life where he felt fearful and alone, and he felt the only way he could be saved from his enemies is through the faithful attention of God. And he believes he was worthy of salvation because he is righteous, because he is obedient, because he was following God's direction. So this psalm was written as a reflection by David of the time in his life when he was fleeing from King Saul. So as you may remember, David was anointed by Samuel when he was a young boy, unexpectedly, to be the next king. But he didn't take the throne right away as a 12 or 13 year old when he was anointed. It took several years, and during that time, King Saul was in power. When the time came for Saul to step aside and David to take the throne, as was God's intention, Saul didn't want to do that. So Saul and David were at odds with each other. David, who was a military leader, well-respected in Israel, who had a portion of the people's support, was then pitted against King Saul and his kind of entourage of followers who wanted him to stay in power. So Saul and David were mortal enemies. David had to flee from Saul, had to hide, had to take refuge. So I want to share with you these words from 1 Samuel that tell of the circumstances of how, at one point in fleeing from Saul, David found refuge and safety, how he was able to trick someone into protecting him. It is thought that the psalm we just read was written when David was reflecting and offering praise to God for this moment of salvation in his journey to the throne. Hear these words from 1 Samuel chapter 21, beginning with verse 10. That day, David fled from Saul and went to Achish, king of Goth. But the servants of Achish said to him, Isn't this David, the king of this land? Isn't he the one that they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of the king of Goth. So David pretended to be insane in his presence. And while he was in their hands, David acted like a madman, making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. The king said to his servants, Look at this man. He's insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? So this account from 1 Samuel is about David fleeing from Saul, encountering a king of a neighboring nation. When they meet him, they say, oh, we know him. We've heard the songs his people sing about him, praising Saul and praising David and their military might. This is a great military leader, the next king of Israel. And so you would think, the king of a neighboring nation would be threatened by the presence of David, the great military leader, the one who's going to take the throne from Saul. David knows this. David is fleeing from Saul. He's looking for refuge, protection, a place to hide until kind of things cool down and he can return to his homeland and take the throne. But if this king in the neighboring nation thinks David is a threat, then David isn't safe there. So David concocts this kind of story, this image. He plays along and pretends to be out of his mind. It says he writes all over the walls. He drools all over himself. He acts out of his mind. And so then the king says, well, he's of no threat. Look at him. He's a fool. And David is protected. So then later on, when David takes the throne and he is writing music for worship, he chooses to write Psalm 34. He writes it in a way that reflects upon this time in his life, where he sees God's hand of protection. And David reflects that it was his own wisdom and righteousness that protected him. His quick thinking, his ability to say, I'm in a predicament, what do I do? How do I save myself? Oh, if I act like a lunatic, then I'll just be seen as a nuisance, not a threat. And I'll have a time of protection in this neighboring kingdom. And the king there won't feel threatened by me, Saul won't be able to find me. I can regroup, get my act together, and have a plan 
to take the throne. And since that plan works, then David writes this psalm reflecting on this time, giving praise to God for protection and giving praise to God for allowing David to have the gift of wisdom to look like a fool in order to protect himself. And he reflects upon this. This psalm, like many, tells the history of a portion of time in the Hebrew people. It allows the people to retell that story by singing it as an act of worship. The same way our hymns tell the stories of our faith, the way when we sing together as a congregation in praise of God, those words are written in our hearts and become part of our devotional life. These words retold by David and then following generations talk about David's flight and fear and predicament when he was threatened by Saul, about his wisdom and his ability to be agile, to think of a way to fake insanity, to protect himself, to then later be safe and be able to then rise to power and fulfill God's plans. And now he's writing this hymn of praise, teaching about the righteousness and wisdom that led to his blessing compared to the foolishness and wickedness of Saul that led to Saul's failures. We will continue our discussion of this passage of scripture together in the church library at 9.30 a.m. in person on September 1st. You can find this video and additional videos online on our Facebook page, our church website, eppchurch.org, or on YouTube. We also record our Sunday morning worship services. You can join us in person at 10.30 a.m. or later watch the online broadcast. The Congregation of the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania has many other opportunities for fellowship, youth ministry, mission, outreach, and study. We would love for you to join us online or in person at any time. We always welcome newcomers. Thank you for joining us this time in study, and we hope that you will continue to join us in prayer and in faithful devotion in our journey of discipleship.